Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Saturday morning, September the 10th, 2022, 855 in the morning, and we're in the middle of 2 Peter today, chapter number 2. You say, that's the middle? It is. There are only three chapters of 2 Peter. Now, we finished 1 Peter two days ago, and we told you the theme of 1 Peter was hope in the midst of suffering. The church was being persecuted, the churches throughout Asia Minor. And so Peter was writing a letter to them to encourage them and to help them persevere and press on in spite of the challenges they were facing. Well, the letter of 2 Peter is much different. It's not themed on hope in the midst of suffering. It's Peter knowing he's about to die, and he has one last chance to encourage these churches. And so he does so. And his main uh, directive is avoid false teachers and false prophets. The truth that we've brought to you has been brought to you by eyewitnesses, eyewitnesses of the very glorification of Christ. That's what we talked about yesterday, Peter mentioning having seen him on the Mount of Transfiguration. And so he's uh, telling them, trust the word of God, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And now chapter two, and both chapter two and three deals with false prophets directly. These people were taking Paul's message of freedom in Christ and deciding you can use that freedom to sin and do whatever you want. And even Paul says, you know, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Uh, and Peter's going to deal with this also because there are teachers and religious leaders that are involved in the accumulation of money. They're uh, adulterous and they fornicate. They're wicked ungodly men in terms of their personal morality. And they felt justified in doing it all. And by the way, nothing has changed. The television and the internet is full of Bible teachers and preachers who are wicked morally. Uh, they're caught in adultery all the time. The uh, Hillsong pastor was caught in adulterous affairs. Uh, there, there are those who seek to donations to their ministry so that they can buy their next private jet and they claim that it's a need of the ministry in order to do the things that God has them for them to do and on and on it goes it's it's a bit ridiculous and when you're when you're grounded in the word of God it's glaringly obvious who these people are and what they're doing so anyhow let's pray and get into chapter number two father help us please as we read and study I pray that you'd give us good discernment I pray that those who are guilty of such things would uh, repent, confess their sin, get right with you, and, and begin to live righteously and holy, as First Peter told us about. Bless our reading and study. Help us today. We shouldn't read this chapter in judgment, but as an instruction and warning uh, for us. Help us to do so. In Christ's name, amen. All right, Second Peter chapter 2, verse number 1. But there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. For the last several weeks, we've been going through a Bible study on Wednesday nights about the Bible translation issue. And we've been talking about why we use the King James Bible solely. We don't rely on any other English translation of the Bible. We stick to the King James. And the reason is because of the translation or the manuscripts used in translation. Uh, there are two sets of manuscripts primarily that English Bibles come from. There is the received text, the Textus Receptus, from which comes the King James Bible. And then there are the critical text translations. And those were brought to us by two men named Westcott and Hort. And as you see the translations and what these manuscripts have done to the English Bible, they deny the deity of Christ or they cast doubt upon the deity of Christ. And there's no reason to do that. There's no reason to whittle away uh, at these, this truth. But that's what they do. They deny the Lord that bought them and they bring upon themselves swift destruction. And look here, this is the, the troubling thing. Verse two, many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth 
shall be evil spoken of. So what ends up happening is righteousness becomes labeled as evil and evil becomes labeled as good. And we're living in a day and a time where we're seeing that occur in the world. Uh, wickedness and un ungodliness and unrighteousness are heralded as freedom and and choice and uh, and love. And then those who would say, no, that's not right. Oh, you're just full of hate. You have hate in your heart. It's mind-boggling, the reversal that takes place. And yet that's what happens. The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, greed, shall they with feigned word words make merchandise of you they're just they see you as a wallet they're there to fleece you and get as much money from you as they can whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not so they will get what's coming to them in due time that that judgment it doesn't linger and their damnation doesn't sleep it's coming and here's why peter says i know how god operates let's look at the old testament and see how god operates verse four for if god spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Uh, so those three examples right there. We have the angels that rebelled against God and were cast out of heaven into hell. We have <clears throat> the world that was flooded and destroyed and all the evil, wicked people in it, except for Noah and his family. And then we have the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah who were destroyed and burnt and completely leveled to the ground, including all the people in them. So what Peter's saying is, look, God does not tolerate wickedness. And the angels and the world at the time of Noah and the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are pictures of that. He does not uh, tolerate this kind of, of life. Verse 7, but he delivered, he doesn't say but he, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Remember, conversation is lifestyle. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So he uses Lot as an example of a righteous man who's in the midst of wickedness. And so even though God will destroy the ungodly, <clears throat> the godly will be delivered by God. And that's verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. <clears throat> but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. And so here it says, God is able to deliver the godly out of the trials. <clears throat> the unjust, however, will be reserved unto judgment and punished. And it's those who walk after the flesh, uncleanness, despising government, organization, and authority, <clears throat> self-willed. And they'll speak evil of dignities, those who are doing right. They'll criticize those. <clears throat> and it says that angels are greater in power and might than man is, yet they don't go before the Lord and accuse the, uh, the godly. So verse 12, but these as natural brute beasts, talking about these false teachers, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. <clears throat> Spots they are and blemishes, 
sporting themselves or showing off with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. So those that are are simple, those aren't grounded in the faith yet, they're unstable. These false teachers win them over. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. If you remember the book of Numbers, the story of Balaam is told there, and he's just greedy. He wants the money that the king is offering to curse Israel, but God won't let him curse him. Verse 16, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. And so Balaam is rebuked, his donkey, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice, dumb meaning unable to speak. Uh, Ass is a donkey, of course. The King James uses that word for uh, the donkey. Speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. So the madness of the prophet was this greed, this covetousness that wanted this money. And so the donkey talks to him and says, knock it off. (laughs) And then he says of these false prophets, these are wells without water. You know, they offer, they claim to offer something, but they don't have it. They, they look like they might have something to show. They do not. Clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure, look here, through the lusts of the flesh. The motive that these false prophets use is the lust of the flesh. And this is where this whole, you don't have to live right, you don't have to do right. Those preachers that preach, you have to live a certain way, they're legalists, and that, and that's not Bible, we're free in Christ, so go ahead. Go ahead and social drink, go ahead and, and use marijuana, uh, uh, responsibly in your home, go ahead and uh, you know do whatever you want to do. Dress however you want to dress. Talk however you want to talk. None of it matters. And and those who are unsaved or those who are carnal Christians are like, man, I like that message. Well, those allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error, while they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. So here's here's the the lesson. Uh, you, you, they promise liberty, but themselves are servants of corruption. So you have this this uh, okay. Go ahead and drink socially. Go ahead and consume alcohol. Uh, you got freedom to do that. And then all of a sudden, you think about it and you go, wait a minute, these same guys that pronounce that freedom, they end up alcoholics and drunks and they lose their marriages and they lose their ministries and they lose their influence. Well, I guess their freedom resulted in in bondage, didn't it? You know, you 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 open yourself up to these things, and then and you claim that it's through the right the right of freedom. Well, now you've just found bondage all over again. Verse twenty: For if the, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So these people who were saved and came out of the world, they turn around and they go right back into it, and their latter end is worse than they were before they were even saved. Verse 21, For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, and this is from the book of Proverbs, you can find it, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. The book of Proverbs says, as the dog returneth to his vomit, so doth the fool return to his folly. It's distasteful. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I don't mean to make you sick, but you've, we've all seen it. A dog vomit, 
And then he'll walk around a second, and then he'll go right back to that puddle and begin to lick it up again. It's disgusting and repugnant. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You just wash that pig, you get it nice and clean. As soon as you're done, she runs right over to the mud hole and lays down in it again. And that's what people who get saved and delivered from the, the world and then turn right back into it are like. Look, if you're a Christian this morning, it's time to separate from the world. It's time to become a different person. It's time to let all of that old stuff go. And it's time to be that new creature in Christ. First Peter, Peter said, be holy, even as I am holy, speaking of God. All right, I've got stuff to do. I got to let you go. Thanks so much for uh, watching this morning. Tomorrow we'll finish this book up, eight o'clock in the morning. Thanks again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great Saturday.